QuickBooks Desktop 2024 Customer Prepayment Estimate Sales Order Receive Payment Forms. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample company file we set up in a prior presentation using the enterprise version of the QuickBooks desktop software so we can practice the new unearned revenue feature within it. Under the view dropdown, we have the hide icon bar selected, the open windows selected, open windows open on the left hand side. In the company dropdown, we have the home page open. Now we're going to go to the reports and select the two major financial statement reports like we do every time company and financial let's start off with the balance sheet report i'm going to customize the report up top changing the range from 010127 to 123127 and then go to the fonts and numbers changing the font up to 14 as we do every time is that okay yes okay then then we're going to go to the reports drop down again company and financial this time the profit and loss the income statement and let's change that range this time the range going from 010127 to 060627 because we want to see it side by side month by month not the total only in other words but the month by month breakout our first scenario was run in january second scenario in february the third scenario took three months from uh march to may this next scenario is going to be in june let's customize the reports fonts and numbers changing the font size back on up to 14 is that okay yes okay then all right, so then let's go back to the home page. Quick recap of what we have done in the past. We ran three scenarios so we can do some comparing and contrasting. The first one, the normal scenario where we don't get a prepayment. We just enter the estimate, the sales order. Remembering the sales order would only be there if you're in like the enterprise version. They're both uh, transactions that aren't recording uh, any actual journal entry to the financial statements. Then we created an invoice. And we also went up and uh, created a purchase order in order to receive inventory because we imagined it was for an inventory item. And then we received the payment and make the deposit. That's the normal process. However, we might have an unearned revenue situation or a customer deposit where we receive the payment first, which could come in like two major scenarios. One being where we sell a large product. In our case, it was the psychedelic surfboard where we would want to deposit in advance to us delivering the, the surfboard to make sure that we're going to receive the payment to lock the customer in to the transaction. The other being uh, if we have a subscription model, classic subscription models being magazine newspapers, more modern subscription models being like online application services, in which case we receive the entire payment up front. We are, we, when we recorded these two types of transactions, we, hit, we entered the estimate, we entered the sales order, but on the customer side, we then jumped to the receive payment, recording it in the old method that we used to do, which is a negative receivable, which works pretty well from a bookkeeping standpoint, but isn't quite right from a reporting standpoint, and that's where the problem lies. So this time, we're gonna, we're gonna do the new method where when we get to this receive payment, we're going to record not a negative receivable, not income, but rather a liability, which we'll call in this case, customer deposit, because we're imagining we're in that surfboard situation where we're selling a fairly large or expensive item and we want to get the deposit first before we complete the sale, possibly because we have to order like a custom surfboard. And then our next scenario will be one where we have the subscription model where, where we might rename the liability account as unearned revenue. Okay, so let's go through the process. If I, if I go to the, the customer dropdown, and let's just take a look at what we did before customer center. This is where our customers hang out. And in the last one, when we did the negative AR, it looks really nice internally. What we did is we, we, we made the estimate, then we made the sales order, and then on the sales side of things, we used the sales order uh, to create, uh, or we then created a payment. So we received a payment for it. And then 
we created an invoice to finish it off. This payment, however, was recorded as a negative receivable, but it looks pretty easy to follow just from a internal bookkeeping perspective to try to just get the facilitate the transactions, right? So now let's do th the new one. We're going to go to the home page. Let's start with a uh, estimates and we're going to have an estimate and I'm going to call it this time four and this is going to be customer uh, prepayment, which is a weird name for a customer. But the idea is that I'm going to try to separate everything to this being scenario number four. That's going to be our customer name. I will quick add it. We're going to say it happened on 060127 tab, 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 tab. I'm going to make a new item, which is going to be by the same name. Although I'm going to imagine it's that psychedelic surfboard uh, scenario again. So someone, a customer is in, wants to order a surfboard. It's going to be an inventory part. We don't have it on hand. He wants some crazy psychedelic airbrush on it or whatever. And we're like, okay, we're going to have to order it. So we're going to order that. Uh, but we're going to want the down payment first to make sure that this crazy looking guy is actually going to pay us, right? So we're going to say that the cost, let's say, is $100 to, to match the scenario we had before. Sales price, $175, same scenario we had before. Sales tax is turned on within the system. Good. We're going to set up an account here. So this is going to be a new account that we're going to set up. Set up the account, and I'm going to call it uh, an income account. Let's just call it an income account and I'll call it customer prepayment for the customer prepayment. Let's say income, something like that. So I can see a different account so we can again, separate our scenarios that we're running. So we're going to say, okay, there it is. I'm not going to say any inventory on hand because we will enter a bill at a future point when we order the surfboard. So there it is uh, down here, $100. The, the markup is 75, so we're charging 175, $13 is the tax. And if I was to record the journal entry, there is no journal entry yet because it's just a request form, just as we've seen in our prior practice problems. Let's go ahead and uh, record it and then check it out. If I go into my customer center, we're gonna say there's our customer, there's our estimate, no impact on the financial statements at, as of yet. So let's go back to the home page. The next step would be estimate. We create the sales order. This also being an internal form, you wouldn't have this possibly if you didn't have like the enterprise version, in which case you would go directly from the estimate to the invoice possibly. But the sales order we can think of as in essence, locking in the customer. So the, the, this person wanted a surfboard and we're like, okay, here's the estimate. And now they're agreeing.